Hey guys, so welcome to the lesson on what is high ticket dropshipping and how does it work. So on this screen I'm actually going to draw out a little display for you on what it looks like and how this business model works. And then after that I'm going to show you a competitor's site, actually one that I used to own that I sold back in the day and what a high ticket dropshipping store looks like and then what a supplier's website looks like. And then lastly I'm going to show you um, Google Shopping which is where we find um, our customers. So let's get going with this. So high ticket dropshipping is basically three main things. Um, you are the retailer, so you have a website. And let's just say this is your logo in the upper left. This is a product for sale right here. Okay, this is a description of the product. This is the buy button. Really bad. <laughs> but good enough. This is your website, right? And somebody finds your website through um, various traffic sources. Let's say, like Google search engine, right? That's one possible way. They might find it through social media or some kind of Facebook advertisement, other social media thing. Maybe through like a YouTube video. But generally speaking, they're interested in the product you have to buy. They go on the internet to find it somewhere on the internet and they find your store. So they go to your store. They land on the product page, hopefully. Um, they might look around and stuff and if they decide to buy from you then the way it works is you have a supplier let's just call it S for now because they may have a website um, it might not be a functional website it might just be a store, uh, website that shows their products a catalog website and then you actually have to email them orders or it might actually be a dealer portal website every supplier is a little bit different but we work with uh, manufacturer suppliers which means that they are actually um, suppliers that own the brands that they carry. Um, they are distributors. Distributors are separate companies from manufacturers that actually resell a manufacturer's products to end consumers. Um, we do not want to work with distributors because they charge um, a percentage of the margin, right? And we want to work directly with the manufacturer's suppliers because we're going to get the best margins, okay? So we work with the suppliers and um, we work, obviously, by getting orders from customers. So that's a C for customer. And what happens when you get an order from a customer, right? The customer gives you money. You then uh, take that order and you make a what's called a purchase order. It's a little piece of paper that says, or an email that says exactly what the customer's details are and um, what the order details are and any specifics about the order. And then you send that along with your credit card. So I'll put CC right here. It's a business credit card usually. Um, you send that to your supplier. And then the supplier has the order, right? They charge your credit card. So um, your credit card is going to be charged to the supplier, right? And you'll have like 30 days usually to pay off that bill that the supplier is going to invoice you with. And since you already got paid by the customer through your merchant center or your merchant portal, um, you'll get the cash dropped into your checking account with usually within like three to you know five business days or so, depending on how old your merchant account is. So that's usually how long it takes for um, the cash you get from the customer to deposit into your checking account, which then can be used to pay off the credit card, right? So you send the order to the supplier, they charge your card, and then they ship out the product directly to your customer. That's the key. Um, it's called drop shipping or blind drop shipping. Blind meaning they don't put their info on the box. They only put your info on the box. Some suppliers offer that service, some don't. Some suppliers still put their info on the box. It's not a big deal. As long as your supplier is not Amazon or eBay or Walmart.com, some well-known um, online website, uh, then the customer is going to have no idea who that supplier is. They're going to think they're ordering from you, and they're okay if it came from a you know separate third-party fulfillment warehouse, which is you know the supplier's company. Every supplier is different. Some suppliers are bigger. Some suppliers are smaller. So the bigger suppliers will have umbrella companies, um, maybe even own distributor companies below them, and uh, so those actual companies will you know their info is going to be on the box. Um, some suppliers are really small, and they just have one brand and um, you know their own little fulfillment warehouse, and uh, so it's going to be different for every supplier. But anyway, so the supplier ships the product to the customer. So um, usually if it's a big product with, with high ticket drop shipping, it can be usually big. Then it goes by freight. 
So you have a big freight truck. <laughs> Those giant wheels looks like a tank. But anyways, the freight truck um, drives the product uh, to the customer. Let's redraw those wheels because it's a little bit embarrassing right there. All right, yeah, that's a little, okay, that wheel is terrible. Okay, that's a lopsided wheel, but it's a little bit closer anyways. So you get the idea. Um, we're going to ship the product to the customer, and it's going to be delivered to the customer, and the customer hopefully will be a happy customer. And your key is to do all of the um, customer service uh, beforehand and after the sale. So now your goal is to make sure that you um, email the customer, okay? And uh, this is like a letter, but let's just assume that's online, it's an email, and that you uh, call the customer. Um, let me draw a phone. That, right? So call the customer, email, call, and maybe even live chat, okay? So let's just say that's a live chat box. So um, all these different mediums of communication are a way for you to connect with the customer to make sure they have a good experience. And that's your job as the online retailer. So this is the same business model as many physical retail stores do. They will even inventory their own products in their own separate warehouse. They won't just have a website. They'll actually have a big warehouse, right, with like roll-up doors and like a separate office and all this stuff, right? And um, they even inventory a lot of the products from their supplier that are best-selling products. And, you know, maybe even have their own brands from, you know, uh, suppliers in China and stuff like that, okay? Ali, Alibaba suppliers. So this is something you can consider growing into as you grow your business, if this is something you want to do. This is a location-independent business, that, or location-dependent type of business um, because you have a physical storefront, but you can hire and outsource to other fulfillment centers, still have your own brand from Chinese suppliers, or stock best-selling products from your dropshipping suppliers, and um, have them shipped from a fulfillment center, so you don't have to have your own fulfillment center, so you can outsource that. I'll just put FC up here so it makes sense, Fulfillment Center. But you can grow your business a lot. And um, this is the basic essence of a drop shipping business with high ticket drop shipping. This is the business model, this is how it works. So now I'm going to show you an example of a website of a, a small drop shipping company that only has an online presence. And uh, this is a website that I built out. And what I did was I sold this business about a year and a half after I built it to a company that has their own fulfillment center. And so they've been able to take it and scale it a lot bigger. So let's give that example. It's called Electric Bike City, um, and it's at electricbikecity.com, so you can check that out. And uh, yeah, so they sell electric bikes because this is what I built it to sell. Just electric bikes um, and maybe some scooters as well and accessories. Okay. So this is what a typical e-commerce store looks like that sells high-ticket products. And you can see here the average price point is around $800 for the best sellers. And down here in bigger models, it's you know two, dollars $3,000 or whatever. So um, you can dive through this website, take a look at the product listings, see what they look like, uh, and get an idea of how a really well-built-out high-ticket dropshipping store um, looks. Now, this store sold for $60,000. We were actually averaging... Uh, maybe sixty, seventy, or eighty thousand dollars per month um, in revenue for about a year or so, and that's why we sold it for that amount. Um, and so it's a pretty decent store. Um, this is an example of a good one. So check that out. This is what your website could look like. And then you can look at the brands menu and see all the names of the brands down here. Okay, um, and these are the brands that are manufacturer suppliers that we work with. Some of these brands are actually sold through distributors, though, and the manufacturer did not want to sell to us directly, so we had to go through the distributor to get them. One of those examples is Amazing Innovations. We had to go through a distributor to get that. And so anyways, um, one example of one that is their own, though, is I'll bring up is Big Cat. And so I already pulled up their website here, Big Cat Electric Bikes, and I just found it by typing into Google Big, Big Cat Bikes. And you can see on here on their website, they only sell Big Cat. And that's how you're going to tell a manufacturer's website apart from an online retailer is that they only sell one brand or like their their brands as opposed to a bunch of different brands from different companies okay um, and if you wanted to actually get in touch with them you just you know call their phone number and try to set up a dealer account with them usually they're pretty friendly about it 
Okay, and now I want to show you the main um, place where we actually find customers, and this is kind of the uh, <clears throat> the missing link, right? Because you can have a website and have your suppliers on board, but how are you going to get traffic? Well, you have to find traffic that's interested in the products you have to sell. And the best place that we found to sell these high ticket products is Google Shopping, because people want to find the best price on these high ticket products. So what we usually do is take the name of the product and plug it into Google Shopping and see what comes up. Now I'm actually in Indonesia right now, so it's not going to show me any results, unfortunately, until I put a VPN on. So I'm going to attempt to do it right here while I got you guys on the video. Um, and if this doesn't work for some reason, just on your end, go ahead and type that in and you can see all the different uh, websites that come up for this. So I'm going to actually attempt to do this in an incognito browser now. Uh, yeah, I should hopefully show you guys. Let's see here. I'm a little bit worried that it's not. So if I go to shopping now, yeah, cool. So hopefully you guys can see this. Um, this is going to show you all the websites that are selling this and listing ads for it, right? So on the left-hand side, you can see surescooters.com, Bikes Express, Bike Mania. So these are like niche stores. A lot of them aren't niche, but if I were to just go to Sure Scooters and see what that's all about, that would be my first step. Um, you know, this is a website that sells. Uh, looks like their niche is scooters specifically, and they happen to sell these, uh, whatever this is, like a trike or something, tricycle, um, which is fine. So, yeah, uh, this is kind of how we find competitors as well, which I'm going to go deeper into. But anyways, now you understand the main traffic source. And so somebody who's looking for this product might be interested in it for one reason or another. Um, they're probably typing this long tail keyword, which includes the brand name, uh, the model name, uh, and the category name. Tri riders, the model name, category would be like comfort bike, or I guess tricycle, trike. And uh, this particular product would pop up on the competitor site. And, uh, you know, it's 559 here, where as opposed to on this website, it's 750. So that person was easy, had an easier time finding a better deal online, obviously. Now, even though there's a lower price, they want to make sure that they're on a trustworthy website. They're going to look around a lot more and uh, make sure that they're going to get a good deal and they're actually going to get the bike that they want, something like that. So we'll go more into that later. But this is basically essentially how high ticket dropshipping works. And you guys can get an idea there. And um, so with that said, let's move on to the next lesson.